taken to protect their stations. They've turned the tops of London Tower blocks into fortresses. Police and council officials made the discovery when they tried to break into an apparently empty council flat in Hackney in East London. What they found was a booby-trapped barricade of concrete and razor wire. Phil Bales reports. Once this was a typical high-rise council flat in Hackney, now it's a pirate's fortress protected by three tons of concrete. Workmen sent to smash their way in say they could have been killed. Scaffolding pipes embedded in the concrete were allegedly wired up to the mains. It's claimed glass files containing ammonia and CS gas were embedded in the wall, waiting for the workmen to strike. This block in itself is quite high up on sort of London's skyline and it's an ideal place if you were so um, motivated to have your own radio station but we are not going to let people do that in our residential properties. Barbed wire fortifications sitting congressly on the roof of the block, the radio flat just below. Extraordinarily, the fence isn't there to keep the police and illegal radio inspectors out. It's the way the pirates get in. They abseil in. Hanging perilously from a rope, the youngsters behind this craze swing their way into the top window. It's exceedingly dangerous in the first instance because if they fall, they'll die. Um, and, but that, of course, will be a matter for those people who are determined to illegally use the airwaves. Police are cautious about claims that there's big drugs money behind a network of similar stations across London aimed at advertising drugs parties. But what is the motive? The council's put in fortifications of its own to secure the empty flats. But the abseiling pirates risk everything to get in. They say the stations make small amounts and it's all harmless fun. They're saying in the newspaper that we earn 50 grand, 100 grand and all that rubbish there, right? That's all, that's, they're blowing it all up, you know what I mean? That's nothing. You can never earn that much money out of pirate radio. I don't care what station you run. But on the estate, the view that drugs are involved is expressed by many residents. If evidence emerges that that is accurate, then you may be assured that we at Stoke Newington, the police here, are determined to deal in a robust and vigorous way with misuse of drugs. Whatever happens, I've got to still do my radio station. I do it for the public now. When I started it, I started it to do it as a joke. But now it's just a thing where it's gone beyond a joke now. now like, I've got so much listeners. It's the biggest part of radio station in London. And you're going to stay on air? Of course, sir. It may not turn out to be harmless fun for passengers on a fully laden jet. The pirates' broadcasts can interfere with Heathrow Airport transmissions and could conceivably cause a crash. The stations also often broadcast on emergency services frequencies and could delay a fire engine or an ambulance. Phil Bales now joins us live from the newsroom. Phil, how seriously are police viewing this? Well, you have to take it very seriously, uh, not only from the point of view of uh, possible loss of life, if it's as innocent as that, because uh, there are stories around that estate that these people actually climb up the side of the blocks of flats without any ropes or any means of support, and quite clearly they could, as the policeman said, fall to their deaths. But quite apart from that, there are unsubstantiated reports that there is quite big money behind this, that... Uh, some of the parties and raves that are advertised on it uh, do sell drugs and that drugs dealers are prepared to pay quite a lot of money to get their adverts on these commercial radio stations. So the threat is being taken very seriously. So are the pirates just going to be allowed to carry on then? I don't think they're going to be allowed to carry on, but quite clearly it's going to be pretty difficult to get into that flat. Uh, already the council is saying that it thinks that uh, it's going to have to bring in the army to get in because uh, that's a very, very thick wall and uh, reinforced by steel. So uh, I don't think they're going to be allowed to carry on, but for the moment I think they're pretty safe inside there, Fiona. How big a problem could this become, Phil? It could become absolutely huge if it's a, a craze that gets completely out of control. But the police say that uh, they, they are going to tighten up on it. But how do they stop people abseiling up and down buildings? I mean, it's almost impossible to do, I would have thought. Phil Bales, thanks very much indeed.